The Story of Abraham This is Abraham. He lived about 4,000 years ago, and he's known for his trust in God. Abraham lived in Ur with his family, which is a city in the region that today is known as Syria. He was 75 years old when he met God. God said to him, Leave your home and go into a country that I will show you. Abraham trusted in God, and he took all of his belongings and started the journey. His wife, Sarah, his nephew Lot, and many of his employees and animals also came with him. God led Abraham into the land that today is known as Israel. There he met with him again and told him that the whole country would be given to him and to his descendants one day. Abraham did not have any children at that time, but still he trusted in God's promise. Abraham lived in the land that today is known as Israel as a nomad. In that time, people lived in tents. Abraham became quite rich as God always provided for him. He and his nephew, Lot, soon had so many animals that the pasture land where the animals ate from was not big enough for all of them. Abraham's and Lot's shepherds started fighting over the best places. When he recognized what was happening, Abraham talked to Lot and made him an offer. Let's spread out to solve our problem. I leave you the choice. If you want to go south, I'll go north. If you want to go east, I'll go west. Lot decided to go to the valley of the Jordan River, as it was a fruitful area and there were some cities there. Abraham went to a place called Canaan. Abraham lived for a while in the land called Canaan. He was old and did not have any children. One night, Abraham woke up because God called to him. He went out of his tent and God spoke with him. Abraham, I will give you many descendants and they will become a huge nation. Abraham replied, how can that happen? I and my wife Sarah are so old by now that it's impossible for us to have children. Look to the sky, God replied. Look at the stars. Can you count them? That is how many descendants you will have. Abraham trusted in God's promise. Sarah, Abraham's wife, came to him with an idea. It's obvious that I am too old to have children. And if we don't have children of our own, one of your employees will inherit all that you have after you die. Take my servant, Hagar, and sleep with her so that we can call her child our own. In that time, it was normal to have people work for you as servants, and it was also legal to have children with them that could officially be called their master's child. Abraham followed Sarah's suggestion and slept with Hagar. When Hagar became pregnant with Abraham's child, she became proud. She started to look down on Sarah, and she teased her because she was not able to give Abraham a child of her own. Sarah went to Abraham and told him about it. He replied, Hagar is your servant. You can do with her whatever you want. From that day on, Sarah began treating Hagar so badly that finally she decided to run away. As she was running away to the desert, she found a well where she stayed. A messenger of God, called an angel, came to her and asked, Hagar, what are you doing here? She said, I ran away from Sarah because she was treating me so badly. Go back, he encouraged her. God will take care of you, and you will have a son, who you shall call Ishmael, and he will be a fighter. Hagar was impressed that God was taking care of her and her needs, and she went back to Sarah and Abraham. And soon after all of this happened, she bore a son and called him Ishmael. One day, Abraham saw three men coming toward him, and he recognized that it was God visiting him in the form of the three men, so he invited them to stay for dinner. When they were eating, one of the men asked about Sarah, Abraham's wife. Where is she? Sarah was not eating with them, but she was staying inside the tent. I have great news for her. In one year, she will give birth to a son. Sarah was overhearing what they were talking about outside the tent, 
and she had to laugh because both she and Abraham were way too old to have children. Why is Sarah laughing? The men wondered. Don't you trust in God, Sarah? I will be back in one year, and you will have a son. I didn't laugh, Sarah replied. Yes, you did. After that, Abraham started to walk with the three men. They walked toward the cities called Sodom and Gomorrah, and one of them started talking to Abraham. I do not want to keep from you what I have planned. The people living in these two cities are doing awful things to each other. They are so evil that I have decided to destroy them. Are you sure about that? Abraham replied. I can't believe that everyone living there is that bad. Will you destroy the few good people living there together with the evil ones? What if there are 50 people living there that have done no evil? Okay, if there are 50 people there who are not participating in evil, I'll spare them all, God replied. What if it's 25 people? Then I'll spare them for the sake of the 25. What if it's just 10? Even if there are only 10, I will not destroy the cities, because you have asked me for it, and I call you my friend. After this conversation, Abraham went back to his home. Abraham's nephew, Lot, lived in Sodom with his family. He was sitting in front of the city gate when two messengers of God, called angels, passed by. Lot went up to them and invited them to come to his house. At first they refused, but he insisted because the city was dangerous, and so they joined him. When they arrived at his house, the people of Sodom started gathering in front of the house, shouting, Lot, give us your guests. We want to rape them. Lot went outside and closed the door behind him to protect his guests. Please don't do such an evil thing to them. They are my guests. I have two daughters that I can hand out to you instead. They wouldn't even listen to him. They pushed him aside and tried to break into the house. In that moment, the angels brought Lot into the house and closed the door behind him. And the men outside became blind so that they couldn't hurt anyone anymore. Take your family and leave this city, the angels urged Lot. Quickly, leave now and don't look back. As they were hesitating, the angels took them by their hands and led them out of the city. Run, don't turn around, they told them. As they were running away, fire fell from the sky and destroyed the two cities. Lot's wife turned around to watch, and in that moment she was turned into salt. Sometime later, Abraham looked down on Sodom and Gomorrah from a hill. Both cities were completely demolished. Only a pile of smoke was coming from the place where they had been. The only survivors of this catastrophe were Lot and his two daughters. When Abraham and Sarah were very old, they had a son, who they called Isaac. Isaac grew up together with his half-brother Ishmael. Ishmael was the son of Abraham and Sarah's servant, Hagar. After a while, Sarah recognized that Ishmael was making jokes about Isaac and teasing him all the time. She went to Abraham and asked him to send Hagar and Ishmael away. Abraham didn't want to do that, because Ishmael was his son as well. He asked God what to do, and God confirmed that it was the right thing to send them away. Abraham gave Hagar and Ishmael some food and sent them away. After they had been wandering through the desert for a while, they ran out of water, and Hagar was afraid they would die there. In that moment, a messenger of God, an angel, appeared and told them, You will not die here. I will protect you, and I will give Ishmael many descendants. He will be the father of a huge nation. At the same time, Hagar saw a well nearby that they could use to fill their water and continue their journey. Until today, Ishmael is seen as one of the forefathers of the Arab people. When Abraham's son Isaac was a young man, God spoke to Abraham. Abraham, take your son Isaac, go up with him to the mountain, and sacrifice him to me. It was a custom in that time to kill and burn animals, as a sign that God was more important than our wealth. This act was called sacrifice. 
So Abraham took Isaac and went up to the mountain with him. When they reached the top, Isaac asked Abraham, Father, we have wood for the sacrifice and also something to light the fire, but why didn't we bring an animal to sacrifice to God with us? God will provide, Abraham replied. When they reached the spot of the sacrifice, Abraham used some stones to build an altar, which was used for these kinds of sacrifices. Then he tied together Isaac's hands and feet and put him on the altar. When he was about ready to kill him with a knife, he heard a voice from the sky. Abraham, do not kill your son. I see now that you love me so much that you would even give up your own son for me. For your faith, I will reward you richly. After that, they saw a ram nearby that they used as a sacrifice instead of Isaac. When Abraham's son Isaac was an adult, Abraham started to look for a wife for him. He sent one of his servants back to his homeland to look for a wife there. When the servant arrived, he stopped at a well. He asked God for a sign, saying, Soon the women of this town will come here to get water. I will ask them for water. If any of them offers to not only get water for me, but also for my camels, let that be the right one to become Isaac's wife. Soon a woman named Rebekah came to the well. He asked her for water, and she gave it to him, and also offered to get water for his camels. The servant was overjoyed. He gave Rebekah some gifts and asked if he could spend the night at her family's house. During dinner together with Rebekah's family, the servant explained everything that had happened. And, as they all recognized that God had planned all of this, Rebekah decided to go with Abraham's servant and to marry Isaac. Sometime later, Abraham died at an old age. He is known as the forefather for Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. <laughs>